so in today's video, we are going to cover a not too difficult, you know, concept, but it's very important. And the concept is related around selecting workbooks using VBA. And anyone who goes into VBA, you will, of course, write scripts. And most of those scripts in some fashion will be referring to a workbook within your Excel application. Now, the thing is, there's actually many different ways we can go about selecting workbooks using VBA. And each way kind of has their pros and their cons. So we're gonna cover the different ways that we can select a workbook and explain where each particular method can sometimes get us into trouble or it can actually save us in some instances. Now, in my Excel application, I've already set it up. But what I've done is I've created two workbooks. One is called Selecting Workbooks. The next one is called Selecting Worksheets. I'm sure you can guess what the next topic is going to be in our videos. Now, what I want to do is I want to write some scripts that will go through and select the workbooks that I specify, but each one of them using a different type of method. And so we're only going to cover four methods, so there's not a lot that we're going to cover, but each one can be slightly different from the other one. So I'm going to go into my Visual Basic Editor. I already have a module created. I'm going to close that one. And it's just called Module 2, and it's under the Selecting Workbooks workbook. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a subroutine, and I'm going to call it Selecting Workbooks. And this is going to be method one. Now, the first method is going to bro be broken into two examples. The first one is we're going to explain kind of the more long-handed way. So we're going to write the script out in the full way. And then the second example, we're going to shorten it. We're going to show, hey, we can actually simplify it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to create a message box. And I want this message box to return some information you know, about one of my workbooks. So how do I get to one of my workbooks? Well, I know all of my workbooks exist within the Excel application. So what I have to do is I have to go in the application object, so the Excel application itself. And within that Excel application, there is a collection called workbooks. Now, we know that collections are just a group of individual objects of you know, usually similar type. So in this case, the workbooks collection contains individual workbook objects. And once I'm in that collection, I can put some brackets around it and I can specify which workbook I want to see. In this first method, we are going to use something called the key method. With the key method, we can pass through a key into the workbooks collection and it will return the workbook that has that key. So in this method, method we're going to use selecting a workbook using the key method. You might be wondering, what is the key? Well, lucky for us, the key is very simple. It's just the name of the workbook with the extension. So for example, if I wanted to select the workbook I'm currently in, I would be passing through selecting workbooks.xlsm because mine's a macro enabled workbook. And then once I have that workbook and I've basically grabbed it, I want to pass through the name property and I want the, that workbook to return its name to me and display it in a message box. So let's see what happens when I run this script. Perfect. So it went out, it selected the workbook and then it got its name and returned that name to the message box. So now it's got selecting workbooks.xlsm. If I wanted the selecting worksheets, well, we already know the key for that one because it's just the name of the workbook. So it's just selecting worksheets.xlsm. And then that one also returns it. Keep in mind, again, your extensions do matter here. So if I run this, I don't have a, a workbook that's called selecting worksheets.xlsx. So this will return an error. It's very important that your extension is accurate. Now, technically we can simplify this line of code. We call that line of code fully qualified. So we are 
basically specifying the object qualifier before the collection that we're working with. Well, if we delete this, it will still work, but VBA is kind of doing stuff in the background. So it's assuming you mean the Excel application. Most of the time, it's not a matter when we're talking at an application level. There are a few times it will get us into trouble, and that, but that mainly relates to uh, working with different applications from within the same VBA editor. So for example, if I'm working with a PowerPoint application from within the Excel VBA editor, then I have to be a little bit more explicit. But in this example, it's fine. We can remove the application object and we can just leave it like this. So if I run this now, I don't get an error and it still works exactly as I was expecting. So that was using the key method the next example, we're going to use something called the index method. I'm not a big fan of this method. It can get us into trouble because there's a lot of stuff on the background that we have to keep track of, and it's just not very intuitive. So it's still laid out exactly the same. So we're still going into the workbooks collection, and we're, we're still asking for the name of that workbook. But now instead of passing through the key, we're going to pass through the index. So in this example, I'm saying, hey, return the first workbook in my collection, so the one that has index one. How do we determine the index? The index is determined by the order in which the workbooks were open. So if I open book one first, that has an index of one. If I open book two second, then that has an index of two. So the index, again, is determined by the order in which the workbooks were opened. However, there's a caveat to this. For those users who have a personal macro workbook, that is also considered a workbook that belongs to the workbook's collection. More import importantly, it is always the first workbook open. So if I run this script now, we get something that we might not have intended, the personal.xlsb. So it returned my personal macro workbook. Now that's all fine and dandy if you were planning to manipulate your personal macro workbook, but if you weren't, you've created a problem. This is why this method is what we consider unstable because there's a lot of points where it can kind of break, or there's a lot of moments where if we don't know for sure what's going on in the background, we can have unintended consequences. So if I pass through a two, let's see what workbook we get then. Selecting worksheets. So that means that was the second workbook I opened. Let's pass through a three selecting workbooks. So now I'm working with that one. We cannot reference this on the side. This will not tell us the order in which the workbooks were open. So I can't say this was the first one open, then the second, then the third. We cannot reference this on the side. We have to remember in which order they were open. So I rarely use this method and especially if I'm giving it to another user and I'm expecting that user to open workbooks in certain orders, that will get you into trouble. Because if they don't, and you start manipulating a workbook that you weren't intending to, and then you start deleting stuff, or adding stuff, or calling sheets that don't exist in that workbook, you will get all sorts of errors, and it will cause you a big headache. So I don't use this method often, but it's important to see it and understand how it works. The last two are special methods. So the next one we're going to talk about is returning, referring to the workbook that houses our code. So what if we want to refer to that workbook? So what if we want to refer to the workbook where this subroutine exists? Well, there's a special workbook that we can call. We can call this workbook. This workbook 
always refers to the workbook that houses our code. So the one that houses the subroutine. Now in this example, my module that I'm writing this code in, it belongs to the workbook that's called selecting workbooks. So if I run this now, I see selecting workbooks. So just like I was intending. Again, it's a great tool, but know how to use it and when to use it. If you are running into a situation where I put this workbook into my personal XLB, then I will get into trouble because it's going to refer to my personal macro workbook and not the selecting workbook workbook. So you have to be, again, very careful with this one and where you put this line of code because it will backfire. And I remember learning VBA and this got me into trouble because I would copy people's code off of Stack Overflow because no one ever copies code, right? And it got me into trouble because I would put it in my personal macro workbook and I'd say, well, why didn't it work? It's not working. It's got to work. It should work. It wasn't because it was referring to my personal macro workbook and not the workbook that I was intending it to. You'll see this a lot with add-ins. So for example, if you want to refer to an add-in workbook, this is when you'll commonly see this one. The final method is going to refer to the active workbook. So the workbook that we see when we go into Excel. So for example, I've now set selecting worksheets as my active workbook. So if I want to refer to that workbook, I would just call active workbook. And so if I run this now, I see that selecting worksheets is the active workbook in my Excel application. Now, again, we can see how this can get us into trouble. It's fine as long as we know for sure that the workbook that we want to manipulate is the active workbook in our Excel application. If it's not, or say we change windows by accident and we didn't realize it, and then we go and try to run our code, it still might work, but now we've manipulated the workbook that we weren't intending to. So in the active workbook method, we just have to be careful. We have to know that it's referring to the workbook that is currently active in our Excel application. So we gotta be careful. But other than that, that concludes this video. So again, all we did is we just explained the different methods for selecting a workbook. Nothing too complicated, but again, it's, it's kind of foundational. If you don't know how to select a workbook, how do you ever hope to select a worksheet? Well, if you don't know how to select a worksheet, how do you ever hope to select a range? I really wanna make sure that we have these fundamentals down so that way when you start to go and build more complex scripts, you're not gonna be lost and you know for sure how your scripts are gonna work. And then ideally too, as you go and see other people's code, you're gonna be able to read that code easier. You're gonna understand how it's working and you're gonna understand how you might have to modify it to fit your own needs. But again, we were using two different methods. One was using the key method, one was using the index method. So that was kind of the simpler methods. And then we had these kind of special methods. So we would have this workbook method to refer to the workbook that had housed our code. And then finally, the active workbook. So the workbook that was active in our Excel application. If you have any comments or questions, you know, please put them below. And if you could, please make sure to like the video so that way other people can find it. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks again.